Okay, today we're going to go over the yield keyword in C-sharp. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and create a console project, e.g. for example. Okay, so before uh, we explain what the yield keyword does, let's start with a simple example. So we're going to create a method that returns an innumerable of integers, and all it's going to do is it's going to be an infinite sum and it's just going to start at zero and it's just going to keep adding one until infinity. So we're going to do int i equals zero while true, so it'll go on forever. Yield return i plus plus. Okay, so really quick, console.write line, we are going to just print all these out. So for each variable x an infinite sum, console.write line x. Okay, so we're just going to start a breakpoint right here at the beginning of the program and step through. What's going to happen is this is going to create a lazily evaluated i enumerable sequence. And what lazy means is as opposed to if you were doing something like Let's say you create a new list of 10 integers and you fill in 10 of those integers and then you return that array. So you do all that work up front, but when we lazily evaluate something, we only evaluate it item by item. So we do it one at a time and we don't evaluate the next item until the person using our I enumerable asks for it in this case. So this is going to go on forever, so we're going to end up breaking out of it eventually, but I'm just going to hit F5 to start debugging. Okay, so here we wrote I enumerable to the console. Our infinite sum, we're going to step into this and we do in. So okay, it says, we're saying that we want a variable x in our infinite sum, so that tells it to step in here. So we're instantiating this integer i to zero. While true, we're going to continue forever. So we're going to yield return i plus plus so we're going to exit this function for now. You see, we came back here. So our variable x at this point is zero. So we wrote zero to the console. So okay, for our next element, we go back into infinite sum. And you see, we continue where we left off last time. So notice i is, is one, because last time we returned zero. Postfix operator adds one after that line. So we continue again because we're while true. So i is 1 this time. We're going to return 1 and exit this function again. So you see, the x we have now is 1. And if we keep doing this for a while, we'll have printed out 0 through 6 to the screen. So... Why don't we do take 10? This is a uh, link method. And we'll just control F5 to start it. And here you see we get 0 to 9, the first 10 integers starting at 0. So we can return an i enumerable to do this. And we can make it generic too, as we'll see later. But real quick, I'm going to show you, you can do the same thing with an i enumerator, which is the iterator class in C Sharp. So I'm just going to call this infinite sum iterator instead of enumerator because enumerator and enumerable are easy to mix up. So we're going to do something uh, really similar here. We're going to start our i at zero and we're going to while true and we're going to yield return i plus plus. Oops, not one plus plus, i plus plus. So really, this is the same thing as we had last time. And we'll create a separate thing for this too. So we'll console, oops, not window height, right line. This will be our iterator. Again, we'll do, well, this is different because it's an uh, iterator. So iterators start before a valid index. So we're going to first create our iterator equals infinite sum iterator. Then we have to move it forward one to get it to the first valid index. So, iterator.move next. And then we'll 
say while iterator.current and we'll do is less than 10. We're going to again write our result to the screen, which in this case is iterator.current. Um, and then I'm just going to run without debugging, control F5 so we can see the console window. Oop. What went wrong here? I need a numerator. Oh, we forgot to move next. So we're going to move next in here as well. Okay, so you see we move our enumerator to the next position 10 times. We start at an invalid position, so again we have to move to the first valid position. So you see this works the same way. And actually you see this is the exact same C sharp code. So now um, this is all well and good. These are kind of trivial examples, but yield return can do a lot of handy stuff for you, and it does it lazily. So again, it's really good for expensive operations where getting something one at a time makes more sense than making the user wait to get every result of that I enumerable. So uh, also real quick, you can use yield break. This will stop your I enumerable, and it'll make it finite. So yield return does not have to be used with infinite uh, sequences. You can use it with finite sequences as well. So let's give a slightly more practical example. Let's generate prime numbers using yield return. So we're going to use I enumerable int again, primes. So quick refresher, a prime number is only divisible by one and itself. So what that means is that if a number is divisible by another number, it is not prime. And since prime numbers are only divisible by one and themselves, every number that isn't a prime is composed of prime factors, as well as non-prime factors in, you know, some cases. But if something has factors, you know, those can be factored into something prime, if that makes sense. So we'll just go through this real quick, and hopefully it'll make more sense than me just talking at you. So real quick, we're going to create ver primes, and again, this is really nice because we can instantiate variables inside of here, and I'll show you after this, we can also uh, send arguments to these functions as well. So we're going to create a new list for our primes, and we're going to just start it off with the first prime two. Bootstrap it with two there. Okay, so first things first, two is a prime, so we're going to yield return prime sub zero, which is two. And then we're going to just do a for loop here. Again, we're going to start this at our first prime. And we don't have an exit condition, so we're just going to leave the middle of this for loop empty. And we're going to be increasing i by one each time. So, again, we're going to look at our primes. And if our primes, if any number in our primes, if any prime number in our primes we can divide i by that number and we get an even remainder, it is not a prime number. So we'll actually continue here. So, and this is, any is also nice because it'll only enumerate as far as it needs to. So as soon as it sees a prime number that i is divisible by, it'll jump in here and it'll continue. So we don't have to go over our entire list of primes each time, only until we find a prime that i is divisible by. So again, if i is divisible by any of the primes, it is not a prime number. However, if it is divisible by none of the primes, we can add it to our primes. So we'll actually do primes.add i, and then we'll yield return i here. So this will give us a list of primes. So we'll make an entry for that as well, console.write line primes. So again, for each, this will be primes.take, we're just going to take the first 10 primes, 
and we'll call our prime p. So we'll console.write line p. And you'll see again, we're going to control F5 to run. Here we have the first 10 primes. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. You can check those if you don't believe me. So we can do this to generate a lot of, you know, really useful stuff. And the nice thing about this primes is we only store the primes that we need, and then if we ever need more primes, we can continue using them. So I promised you uh, that I would show you arguments. So you can send arguments to these functions as well. So let's say we want to start at a certain place here. So we'll add in augend, which is just the base thing to be added to, and an addend, which is what we add to our base number one to add to. And we'll just add, give them default parameters so they still run the same as they did before initially. So that's all well and good. But we can change these now. Oh, it would actually help if I used the variables. So, okay, we have our augend. We're going to return that. And because the postfix operator only runs after the line it's declared on, we actually have to do our augend plus equals addend over here. So that's no longer needed. So, again, real quick, it's still printing the same stuff. But now we have the added bonus of our infinite sum here. We can start at, let's say, 2 and we're going to count up by tens. So you see we start at 2, we add 10 to get 12, 22, 32, up to 92. So this is also really nice. We can send arguments, and it'll remember our arguments while we go. And we can create different instances of this. So it's not like we only have one uh, infinite sum lazy i enumerable we can create. We can create as many as we want. So we can do our 0 add 1 again. So there's our first i enumerable, here's our second one, the same. What actually happens in the back end? Your code, this code that gets run here isn't actually run like this. What happens is in the back end, C Sharp will generate a class for you that keeps track of all this stuff through a state machine. And they'll just instantiate a new class for that every time you create one of these infinite sums. So I guess the real question is, can we use static storage for primes here? That I'm not actually sure of, because we can't make static local variables like we can in, say, C or C++ here. So that might be worth looking into if uh, you have performance problems that really warrant that. So one thing that I really like to do with uh, these lazy iterators. And by the way, this is the entire concept that Link is built off of. So in fact, if we put a breakpoint here, and we just F5 to run with debugging, oh, actually we're going to have to assign a variable to these. So let's say we have var list equals infinite sum dot take dot take 10. We'll just put a breakpoint here. If we run here, this list if you've ever noticed your results view saying expanding the results view will enumerate the I enumerable, what that means is C Sharp didn't actually enumerate this yet. It didn't iterate through anything. That's because this is lazily loaded. If we expand this with a little arrow here, it actually enumerates over everything and gives us the result. So this gets us, this is what we call eager evaluation to get us everything immediately. And in fact, if you want to force eager evaluation, we can call a dot to list you know, or dot to array. There are a number of functions that will actually eagerly evaluate something. But we'll see now, see, we have a list with a count. This isn't lazy anymore. Even if we declare this an I enumerable of ints, it's not lazy anymore. It, it eagerly loads all this stuff. And that's because it has to allocate space for this list and it just copies them all there. So again, this is the backbone of the language integrated query in C-sharp link. So let's do something fun that I like to use this for. Uh, let's create some extension methods. So we'll do this iList extensions. So 
public static i enumerable. Again, like I said earlier, you can use these with generics. So we're going to create a generic version backwards. And all this is going to do is this is going to enumerate an i list in reverse order. So if you did a dot reverse, if you call dot reverse on you know a collection like this, that's another thing that'll actually eagerly evaluate it. So if we real quick just comment this out, I'm gonna F5 to run again. You see, oh, take reverse. I suppose not. I think it'll do it if you actually have a concrete list, though I can't, don't quote me on that. But all right, so reverse works in this case, but we can write our own. We'll write our own for the sake of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this will eagerly evaluate in some cases, but I can't tell you which. But regardless, this is a good example anyway. So we're going to this i list t source the naming convention link uses. Okay, so we're just going to do i equals zero. Nope. Actually, we're starting at the end, so we're going to do source dot count minus one. While i is greater than or equal to zero, because we want to include zero, i minus minus, we're going to go backwards, and we'll just yield, oh, yield return source sub i we'll see that if we do backwards, oh, this has to be an i list. So we'll do this with a backwards here. So here we go. And because we're using our method here, it's lazily evaluated. So here's all of our stuff in reverse order. Oop. Dot reverse. Well, let me reverse this. For whatever reason, won't let me reverse a to list. So, Either way, I'm pretty sure that reverse will have to iterate over the full collection to get to the end, because this only uses an i enumerable, which only exposes the enumerator, or the iterator. So it'll have to crawl to the end if it uses some sort of naive implementation, unless it tries to do some downcasting to something with concrete indexing, like a, a list or an array. But anyway, um, that's, you know, this is yield in a nutshell in C Sharp. And again, this is useful for things that are expensive to evaluate. Um, I mean, if you're ever writing your own iterator, this is, you probably want to use yield in most cases. But again, you can give it arguments, you can use it with generic stuff, you can use it for extension methods, you can use it for infinite or finite sequences. It's a really useful tool to have when you need it. Anyway, uh, hope. Hope uh, you learned something, and yeah, see you next time.